Aloha folks, welcome to Spike's Cooking Show. Aloha folks, welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. It's been a while since we've had a guest. And tonight's the night. We have a guest and he has one of the premier barbecuing channels on YouTube. And you're like, why are you bringing a barbecue guy on? We have a plan. I'd like to bring on my buddy Greg from Ballistic Barbecue. Greg! How you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm so glad that you could join me here. Oh yeah, it's been a blast. <laughs> and so, can we tell them what we're doing? I think you have to tell them to explain why a, a barbecue guy is on your channel. Yeah, I think you're probably Besides right. Besides a sexy shirt. <laughs> Greg reached out to me and had ideas about helping boost the Breezeway Cocktail Hour show. And I was like, well, you have a zillion... Well, how many subscribers do you have? Uh, like 340, 350, something like that. I don't know. 300 something. Yeah. 300 and some change. Lots. So he was like, I'd love to help you out. And I was like, I would love some help out. So I, I was like, what? There, there doesn't make a whole lot of sense about doing barbecue with Tiki. Oh wait, there it does. We found out a way. Trader Vic not only put out a couple of incredible bartender's guides, but he also wrote, what's it called? Trader Vic's Tiki Party. Yeah, he had that one. And then I think he also had a, a guide to food and drink yes. and a couple other things. There are some ribs that Trader Vic had in his recipe book. Menu, yeah, recipe. <laughs> and uh, and so Greg's gonna be cooking those. I thought we would do one of the oldest Trader Vic cocktails and then do the whole thing together. Let's do it. So let's do it. So the cocktail that we're gonna do shows up in the menu as Trader Vic's own punch. It says, fresh fruit, fine Jamaican rum with a flip, Philip? With a Philip of almond. So I don't know what a Philip is, but there is uh, orgeat in the drink, so that must be what they're talking about. When I went to research the cocktail, I found it in Trader Vic's Bartender's Guide from 1972, and then I went deeper, and it showed up in a, a little bit of a different version in the 1947 version. We're gonna do the 1972 version because it's a little bit more refined. So for this cocktail, we will be using lemons, oranges, rock candy syrup, orgeat syrup, Hamilton White Stash, it's like a light Puerto Rican rum, and Greg brought me this incredible gift. Appleton 21, was it 21 year? 21. That's a lot of years. It's old enough to drink. <laughs> That's a dumb joke. <laughs> this is an incredible rum, so thank you again for yeah, the gift. You're most welcome. And let's drink it. This is where I get hung up in some of Trader Vic's recipes. I'll, I'll make the drink, and then in the description of how to make the drink, uh, he says some bizarre stuff like, don't actually measure anything, just squeeze it into the glass. And you're like, uh, that goes against everything I've learned about tiki cocktails. For this one, he says, what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze orange juice over some shaved ice, then we're gonna drop the shell in the glass, then we're gonna squeeze in lemon juice, drop a shell in the glass. So that's what we're gonna do. We need a half an ounce of each of those. So let's start with a lemon. You, know, you, know, you want me to get a real knife? We're gonna use this little cheeser. Like what kind of knife? This is like the knife of the Breezeway show. What do you have? I have a Japanese shun. Yeah. Do you mind? No. I, I just like this is kind of a. Yeah. I mean, I you know I, I've always thought that the ceramic one was good enough. No, you need one of these. But uh, you know. I, I may have to have to hook you up with one of these for my. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, you got a connection? I, I'm yeah. I'm a sponsor. <laughs> oh wow. That <laughs> looks like something you'd flay a fish with. Well, this I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you this is a boning knife but. <laughs> So not usually meant for, for cutting fruit. But it will cut fruit. <laughs> It'll cut fruit. I'm not giving him crap about his little knife. I'm not. I mean, I, I respect your knife, but I, I just- I don't like the way you're holding you're, it you're so making, delicately. Since you're making me do the cutting, I'd rather use a tool that I'm familiar with. Nope. How's that? Is I, that? I think that makes sense. Okay, because we don't want bloodshed, <laughs> right? Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Half? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess that'll do it. The right tool for the right job. See, we, we have a couple of glasses here. I have a Trader Vic's brand glass here, and I have Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour glass. I just ordered more of these, so more of them are on the way, but I'm gonna give this to you once we're done, so. Appreciate it. Certainly. Half an ounce of lemon juice. And I have good eyesight except when it comes to things that are close. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna hook me up with his eyes. Yeah. All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. That's good right there. Glad you were here, bro. Okay, so it says that you're gonna pour that over ice in the glass. So that's the way we're gonna do it. We're gonna do, they said half a scoop of ice. And since we're using kind of a small scooper, we'll do it like this. This will go into mine. 
Can you get another half ounce out of that lemon? Yeah, I think I can. Make sure you tell Keep me. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, right there is perfect. Now, now we're gonna drop the empty shell in there. I had to ask him what a shell was. I was thinking like pecan shells or something. Yeah. You want to put it in there? No. Well, I, it says to, to to put the empty shell in the glass. But so we only have one and two drinks. You want me to cut this in half? Doesn't it feel like that's too much shell to put it in? It seems this? like it's ridiculous in my opinion. But I'm not Trader Vic. <laughs> I'm not Trader Vic either. It says squeeze the orange juice over half a scoop of shaved ice in a double old fashioned glass. Drop the shell in the glass. Is this a double old fashioned? Double? Yeah, oh, it is. Okay. Squeeze in lemon juice. Drop in the shell. So you heard him. Let, can we cut it in half? I can. That's again. I, I yeah. That's a lot of lemon. Yeah. Use your uh, super knife. My shun. Yeah. So we'll put that in each glass. That is just bizarre. It is. That's a lot of shell. And then let's do the orange. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna cut this guy in half, and we are gonna do half an ounce in each cocktail. And that is very efficient. Yes, I'm telling you. <laughs> We, we'll get one for us. Uh, not nearly as adorable as mine, though. It's not. You want to squeeze that? You could probably hand squeeze that. Okay. Half a pound? Yeah. I'll let you know. That's good right there. And then we will pour that into here. <laughs> All right. That's great right there. Okay. Another half an ounce right there. Why don't we cut that thing in half? And then I guess we're going to drop the shell into the glass. Yeah. And if you people out in internet land think that this is ridiculous and we're doing something wrong, let me know. But literally that's what it says in the bartender's guide. Okay, it's a punch. It's Trader Vic's own punch. It calls for a dash and I want to make sure the dash is... So when Trader Vic's talks about a dash that is not bitters, oh. he actually means a, a precise amount. Like a half of an ounce? Or a quarter of an ounce. A quarter of an ounce. So for the next ingredient, we're going to do a dash of rock candy syrup and a dash of orgeat. So let's start with the rock candy syrup. Rock candy syrup, of course, is three to one sugar to water. So you can squeeze a little bit harder there. Is it UFO? That's good right there. Is it, who sang the song Rock Candy? Is it UFO? Was it? I don't know. You know the song title? Yeah. yeah huh. All right, quarter ounce. Is that good? Yeah, that's good right there. Quarter ounce of rock candy syrup in each glass. Okay. Now the orgeat. Yeah. Orjat, and of course Orjat is like an almond liqueur. I know, super good. It smells almondy. This one's from our friends at BG Reynolds. Delicious, delicious Orjat. Thank you, BG Reynolds. A quarter ounce. Go ahead. And that's good right there. Perfect. Okay, quarter ounce here. One more. That's good right there. Perfect. That's really perfect. Okay, so we're getting the ingredients here. Now on to the fun stuff, the rum. We're gonna do one ounce of light rum. Yes. Yes. And then one ounce of dark. Yes. See, yeah, tell me, I think I see the one, but I'm okay. gonna go off of you. Okay. A little more, we'll keep going. So you can use a Hamilton White Stash for this. Also, I love Bacardi 8 for uh, the light rum. I'm looking. Mm, nope, a little more. A little more. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's nerve wracking when you're like, I don't know. Okay, perfect. No one's gonna complain too much about an overpour anyway. Hey? No, not at all. And now for the Appleton 21. I'm sealed. Oh, wow. This should be a sponsored one by Appleton. Look at how fancy. Come on, come on Appleton. Yeah, Appleton. This is a cool bottle. Yeah, super cool bottle. And what, is that a cork? Cork. Oh, that smells good. It smells really good. Yeah, it smells smooth. Oh. One ounce. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and there we go. One ounce there. And that's perfect right there. Uh, Great. Okay, so there's the drink. Now, I would imagine that if they were making this at the bar, at the restaurant or bar or whatever, they would make it like this and then they would move the contents into yeah, a I was, shake. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it shaken or stirred or stirred or anything? Yeah, it, it is shaken. Most Trader Vic's cocktails are shaken and the most Don the Beachcomber cocktails are actually mixed with like a gotcha. mixer. I'm gonna put another scoop of ice into this. I'm gonna pour the contents into the shaker and I guess I'm gonna shake them with the, the fruit in here too. Yeah, I can smell the fruit. Smell, yeah, it smells, smells good. It smells really good. And then, of course, you want to shake horizontally. Well, it won't work. Until the tin is nice and frosty. 
and a quick little tap. There it goes. There Whoa! There it is. Nice. Wow. Looks okay. Nice. Looks nice, kind of a peach color. Yeah. Let me put some ice into the tin, and then you can do the same. Gotcha. It seems like one scoop gets you close. You ever done this before? I've done it without, but with two tins. Oh, okay. And I've never done it with a glass. Okay, now I'm gonna shake until the tin gets, it's already frosty, it's already done. <laughs> yeah, baby. There we go. Oh, come on. Show off. You made the fruit disappear. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Plunk. <laughs> Have you ever been drinking with an iced, like iced tea or something and all the ice comes into your face? Of course, yeah. It's pretty comical. Okay, so we are going to uh, top them off with ice. Of course, that is super fancy ice from Sonic. And then we're gonna garnish with a fruit stick and a little dude and a fruit stick and a little dude. Of course, that's the menahuni that we learned about a couple episodes back. And then a whole bunch of mint. Here's your mint. You know what to do with that? See? Professional. Do I just jam it in there, or what do you do? Jam it in there. Like this? Oh. I mean, sorry, Menahuni. All right, and so from pre-1947, this is Trader Vic's own punch. Looks good. Totally does. I think I did a good job with the mint, too. Yeah, super good job. Cheers. Cheers. Interesting. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, very light. It's very light. Mm -hmm. I was expecting a little bit more kind of a medicinal punch, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you almost don't taste it. The alcohol, you know that it's back there, but it's yeah. it's a light cocktail. There's kind of more orange the than thing, lemon, I would say. The, the thing I'm really loving it though is you're, you're getting just so much in your face. I mean, you're smelling all this stuff. Yeah, and that that's the intention for I the know. mint. It's awesome. Is that when you bring it up to your mouth, the mint goes into your nose. Not digging on the two star little mini straws, I'm telling you that. What, you don't like the little straws? I'd rather have one decent sized straw. Oh, you mean one from Surfside Sips, a glass straw? Yes, in fact. I don't know, I'm just being real with you though. What? I don't like these two straws. You don't like the little straws? No, I don't. That's what cocktails have. I know, but I'm it's gonna I'm gonna blow a gasket here trying to. <laughs> yeah, that but the great the great thing about this drink is it has these big pieces of fruit in it, like a punch would, you know, if you had a big punch bowl. It's got the mint that when you bring it up to your mouth, you're smelling the mint. You are. You're you're gazing into the eyes of the little Hawaiian. What's his name again? Dude, Menahuni. Menahuni. Yeah. So the ribs should be done, just about now. Yes. So I'll tell you what. Let me grab my camera stuff so I'll have something to put on my channel. Yeah. And then we can try it out. Okay. Cool. We're How's gonna that? do a simulcast. Does that work? Yeah. Let's okay. do that. All right. So we have spent the last four plus hours creating an original Trader Vic's meal, right? Right, we did that <laughs> for hours. It was from Trader Vic's Tiki Party. Trader Vic's Tiki Party. He's looking down at us smiling right now. Yeah, He's I think. probably laughing at the knife. I think he'd be stoked at our two person Tiki Party that we're having. <laughs> <laughs> two persons and a dog. Yeah, well, can we try them? Let's do it, brother. All right, which, uh, can I have this Whatever one? Whatever one you want. Okay. That's, that's the end one. Yeah, is that good? Yeah. I mean, it'll be a little bit crispier right here on the end. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really good. You see what I mean, though? The end's always a little crispier. Mm-hmm. The sauce, I, I think, just has, like, a this spice to it that's really nice. Mm-hmm. The sesame seeds, and it just, it has a... That was the great thing about tiki, is it's not only Polynesian, but it's also Asian and parts of African. It was an amalgamation of exotic cultures. But that brings me back to dining at Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. It brings me back to dining at Trader Vic's in London. Never been there. What, London or Trader Vic's? Paul. <laughs> <laughs> been to Grass Skirt in San Diego. Yeah. So how'd you get into Tiki? My wife was into it a lot earlier than me. Mm -hmm. I still have food in my mouth. I'm, right, I'm sorry. Right now. Mm -hmm. um, I've always liked tiki's and, and the Polynesian kind of works of art, you know, mm -hmm. uh, figures and such. 
But um, it's a, it's her. She she got me into. I mean, she drug me to a couple mm -hmm. events and a couple tiki bars, and I just really had a blast. Yeah. And I, it's funny. I've always had worn Hawaiian shirts. Of course. Yeah. And even when I, when I was in junior high, mm -hmm. I, you know, I had tiki shirts. But, well, Southern California. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. It's so light. It really is. So like light and refreshing. It's getting better now that they're that it's getting a little bit more watered down. Yeah. And that's part of tiki drinks is like the, the water really helps. It's like an old fashioned. Right, yeah, water's part of the ingredients. And that's why if you use, you know, not good tasting water, it'll affect the taste of your old fashioned, just like. But it's it's actually easier to drink now too. Mm -hmm. With these stupid straws. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you start your channel, your YouTube channel? Oh. I shot my first video September 2009. Okay. But I wasn't real serious about it. Uh -huh. At that point, I, I, I honestly thought that first video was going to be my last. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, I just shot it on a whim. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, now I'm trapped. I'm trapped forever doing these videos. Yeah, you get hooked. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened to me. I started uh, from that one video, I started noticing interaction from uh, all over the world. Yeah. And. Again, this was a long time ago when YouTube was still fairly new. Yeah, totally. And yeah, it just became an addiction. Mm -hmm. Well, I think my favorite thing about YouTube is just like the, the relationships and the friendships you end up. Well, that's the best part of it. It really is. Sure. And, and not only from viewers, but also from people who want to collaborate. And, uh, you know, I don't think we would have ever met if had we not no. done this thing. And, and it was a, it was a super fun afternoon. Yeah, I, <laughs> it really was. Out. We did have a good time. Well, it was four plus hours. Like, yeah, it takes yeah. a long time to make these things happen. Yes, it does. Got to meet your dog, Astro. Yep. yep. No, it was a uh, yeah, it was good. And you're right. YouTube's brought me many blessings, mm -hmm. my household, many blessings. But I always say this, the best blessings have been, uh, and this sounds so corny, but the mm. legitimate friends I've met over yeah. the years. Yeah. Um, not just not just fellow creators, but mm -hmm. but also some of the my viewers. You know, I've become friends with, and yeah, um, I mean, like really really saying. good friends. Yeah, yeah it's I know. cool. It is really cool. And I've got friends, people that I call friends, mm -hmm. uh, all over. I mean, all over the world now. Yeah, where where I mean, there would have been no chance of meeting any of these people. <laughs> it's it's just really wacky. Sometimes I cannot believe it's real. Yeah. Well, I it, yeah. I mean, it doesn't seem like it should be a thing, but it, it, you do a good job on your show. Uh, what what has been your biggest accomplishment? Well, it, it's brought me a lot of opportunities. Yeah, you uh, were telling me about Nashville, right? Yeah, I was the official grill master at the 2017 Country Music Television Awards. Yeah, and so country- So SoCal, who was a metalhead, they didn't know it. I snuck through the, snuck through the cracks. Yeah, and country people know their barbecue. Yes, they do. That's, in, that's incredible. So you were flown out to Nashville. Yes. Paid a bunch to, to barbecue, and yeah. that's not a bad deal. My, yeah, my wife went with me, and yeah, and uh, yeah, that I've done a couple books uh -huh. that I never thought. I mean, in a million years, I never would have thought I was so you'd write an a book. author. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, my my high school teachers are laughing. Yeah, and then you have a new channel that is is specifically for hamburgers, right? Yes. And yes. what's that channel called? <laughs> So creative, Greg. Ballistic Burgers. Ballistic Burgers. Yes. The interesting thing to me is one of the, the things that you do is you recreate popular hamburgers. Yes. So in and out burgers or... It's one of the things... What a burger. Yeah. What, did you do, do what a burger? I did do a what a burger. I, I, what a, between the two channels, I have... They're not all copycats. I call them copycats. Yeah. But I have probably 153 hamburger videos I've done. And um, 153 hamburger videos. Yes, and and I always do a call for action to hey, give me suggestions, and I have a list a mile long. Yeah. And the cool thing is, again, so many of the requests are not just, you know, you think of America, you think of hamburgers. Yeah. But I mean, I have requests. I've done burgers from Amsterdam, from wow. you know Great Britain, which I mean, that's kind of obvious, but it's Italy, yeah, um, Japan. I did a I did a burger. It was a it was a recreation of a Japanese uh, Burger King burger, and and 
the bun was jet black, the cheese was jet black. Wow. And the, the sauce was jet black. Wow, that sounds disgusting. It was, well, it was actually good, Yeah. but it had crazy ingredients. Like I had to make the buns, I had to make oh, the cheese, wow. the, the American cheese. Yeah. And I was using ingredients like uh, cuttlefish ink, uh -huh. you know? Uh-huh, oh and, my God. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even look real, but it, it mm. tastes just like a hamburger. Yeah, you know? had, yeah, I'm sure. It a cool taste, but. But sometimes like part of food is visual. So if you're looking yes. at a, like a black hamburger. A lot of food is visual. Oh well, yeah. 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 So when you, I know that you did a version of an In-N-Out burger and In-N-Out happens to be my absolute favorite burger place. Did it taste like an In-N-Out burger? Yes, I mean, a homemade burger, even though I, I love In-N-Out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, honestly, they're great because of just how fresh they are. Yeah. I mean, all the ingredients are so fresh, but I think any burger homemade is always gonna taste, have a little bit of an edge. Oh, I, I better just, than In-N-Out. Yeah. Woohoo! I've, uh, but, but I, but I'm not taking away from it. I oh, did, yeah. I did um, an old video where I did their animal style. Okay. Um, double double. Yeah. And then I did a just a standard double double. It's a newer video. And so if we if we watch those videos, can we learn how to make them ourselves? Yes, you can. Oh man. We were talking. There's a debate about the fries. I like them. Love them. Yeah. Yeah. The key to the fries is eating them on site. Yeah. You know, you don't take them home because they degrade quickly. Right, yeah. Well, um, unless you have anything else, I think that's, I think that'll do it. I really just wanna, I really wanna shut off the cameras so we can finish this plate of ribs because I am, they're so good and I'm starving. Sounds like a plan, brother. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. So Greg, thank you so much for joining us on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail awesome. Hour. Thank you for being such a gracious host. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And uh, go, go to his channel. Check out all his stuff, subscribe, do the things, and uh, we'll see you in the next cocktail video. Cheers. Aloha. Aloha. He has one of the premier barbecuing channels on the YouTube. On the YouTube. I'd like to bring on my buddy Greg from, Gregory or Greg? Greg. <laughs> it's called uh, tiki, uh, tiki Party, or Trader Vic Tiki Party. Trader, Trader Vic's Tiki. Tiki part. Yeah, Trader Vic's Tiki, let's say that again. There are some ribs that Trader Vic created. God damn it. This is the whole thing, just hold it like here. A little higher. Literally, that's what it says in the, in the, in the Bible. Let me see. I think this is going to be amazing. What, the drink? This drink. Or the video. Oh, So we're gonna do one ounce of rum in each rum. What? We're gonna do one <laughs> ounce of rum here. What? Get out of here. He's on my dog. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Astro. Of course, that's the Menahuni that we had. <laughs> God. What's his name? Yeah, Menahuni. Okay, let me get my camera stuff. All right. The best blessings. <laughs> oh my God, right in the middle of this heartfelt. Give me this heartfelt thing. <laughs> hey, you gotta be heartfelt again. I know, I can't now. Now I'm, right. now I'm back to my, <laughs> my callous self. They're spicy too. They kind of have like a, a spice to them. Oh my dog. I just gave him meat with no sauce. Oh. Spam. Mm-hmm. They love Spam in Hawaii. They do. Oh, World War II has influenced a lot of this. You know, that just mm -hmm. it's like a byproduct of World War II, mm -hmm. the Pacific Campaign. Mm-hmm. You done a video with Spam? Think about maybe making Spam. Oh, like making it yeah. from scratch? I've made bologna from scratch. <gasps> oh, I know. What is he doing? Is he looking at you? He's looking at me. He loves me. He's wagging his tail. See, he's like, a, he's like a junkie. You've got him hooked now, you pusher. Plan on making a spam video someday. Okay. And like I said, I've made bologna from scratch. Jack Daniels <gasps> infused bologna, smoked. It's good. Really, it was good. Mm -hmm. This is good, brother. <laughs> it's almost completely I know. gone. I know, you're, you're drinking the hell out of that thing and I'm like, I can't get enough of the ribs. <laughs> Can you get this at other <gasps> Tiki bars, other than Trader Vic's? <gasps> this drink? Probably not, huh? Mm. It's just I don't think so. Drink. Yeah. <laughs> Astro, you gotta stop barking. <laughs> He's just looking at you like, come on, man. You, you hooked me up earlier. <laughs> I'm jonesing. What's your favorite tiki bar? Well, again, I'm so young. I, I mean, I'm gonna, going to have to say based on the very few places I've been. I mean, I told you all the list of places I've been, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, probably what, seven, I guess, tiki bars total. Mm -hmm. um, my personal favorite is Grass Skirt. Mm. Just because it's so immersive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, the... Um, and you live really close also to, um, or what was uh, it called? False Idol. False Idol. False Idol. 
Paul Sider, we haven't been there yet. Yeah. We, that was, again, we had plans, but things mm -hmm. changed mm -hmm. in 2020. Yeah, um, Paul Idol is absolutely incredible. Yeah, it's, again, it's really on our list. Yeah. Then we frequent, I mean, it's not a tiki bar, but Valley High. Oh, we, yeah. We go there for like Oh, that's a, I mean, it's a, it's a tiki restaurant, you know? Yeah. From, uh, I think, the First War. No, sorry, the Second War. Yes, Second War. <laughs> no, the First War. <laughs> that would have been the 18th. When the Doughboys were coming in. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> but the Second War, I think they had pamphlets on the, uh, the tables of the Bali High saying that if you see anybody with binoculars looking across at the at the warships yeah. to say something. Yeah, the North Island's literally right across the bay. Yeah. And back in World War II, well, the, the warships were around the corner and then all the, that's the air base, the naval air base. So yeah. they used to have all the seaplanes based there. Oh, okay. And the seaplane ramps are still there. Wow. I used to, before 9-11, before when it, not 9-11 changed a lot of the security protocols there, but I used to dive, scuba dive underneath the um, seaplane ramps for lobsters. Wow, yeah, no way. Crazy lobsters. Big, wow. big, big lobsters. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. You've been to B the Bali High a bunch. A bunch of times. Have you had their drinks? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're, they're, no. They're good if you're trying to light something on fire or get super, yes, I'll say super that. drunk. Well, yeah, and the other, I'm not an aficionado. I'm trying to learn. That's why I'm watching. <laughs> So I'm trying to... Oh, thank you so much. I went to that tiki event there. Oh yeah, you said it was like a tiki marketplace or something. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I can't remember what, my wife would remember what it's called. Sure. They were selling as a zombie, it wasn't a zombie. No. I mean, it was literally, you know, just a bunch of fruit juice. Yeah. And then a, a three different types of roms. Yeah. And that's that's like what ends up happening with a lot of tiki drinks is they just kind of make up something and they call it a zombie or they call it a Mai Tai. And half the time a Mai Tai isn't really a Mai Tai. I had a Mai Tai in Catalina Island. Yeah, at, oh, at that, at that tiki bar, Luau Larry's or something? Or? Yes, and it was, I, mean, I was damn near hallucinating. It was yeah. really strong. It was probably pineapple juice and Myers rum and orange juice and grenadine and this dog. If you look at the historical cocktail recipes for the Bali High and you make them like the Mr. Bali High, they're incredible drinks. I've had that drink. Yeah. I've had I've had a lot of them. Not at the Bali High or, or, or made it at home? No, at the Bali High. Ooh, yeah, they don't make it the right way. Oh, damn it. I know. You'd think it was their namesake, dude. Would... You would think that they would make it the way they made it for forever and ever, but I don't know what happens to these drink programs and, and I don't know, maybe it's too complicated for them or... You just forget. Yeah, or they just get set in their ways or, or whatever. But they're... <laughs> if you can hear my dog right now, we keep giving him pieces of rib, ribs and now he's hooked like a junkie. We can finish our conversation now. He won't bark at us up here. Okay, okay. <laughs> can you stop so we can have a conversation? He is. Okay. He's, he's under the influence of spare ribs. I know. <laughs> He's like, whatever the hell that is, I want more of it. So yeah, the thing about the Bali High is is their drinks are aggressive. Yeah, like, they are. They're and, high octane. Yeah. High octane. Yeah, high octane for sure. But the, the building is gorgeous, the food's great, like, and, and those drinks are great when you're there, as long as you don't have more than one or one. Some cool history there. Incredible history, yeah. yeah the Bali High I, is... It's a survivor. It's a survivor. I never want to talk poorly on vintage tiki bars, restaurants, because you never ha know how long they're gonna be around. And yeah. I feel like, you know, my wife and I, we've really missed out on going to some, we went to, you know, we were on a road trip and we swung by to try and hit Don the Beachcomber, but it was, we just missed it. It was that Himalayan restaurant. Oh, but yeah. there was still the big swordfish up there. And oh, it was, right. It was heartbreaking, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And for a long time, oh, I don't want to get into this, but yeah, maybe I will. Uh, for a long time, there were a lot of people talking down on Don the Beach Comer, the, the Sam Seafood version. And I just kept going, you better stop it. It's not going to be around forever. It's not. And it's gone now. So we had a, we had 10 great years there and uh, you know, now it's gone, so. There's more on the chopping block, unfortunately. Yeah, I think so too. By doing this, we're able to time travel and we're able to sit at Beverly Hills Trader Vic's and uh, enjoy some of these incredible ribs and some of these incredible drinks. So. Yeah. yeah, thank God people wrote this stuff down. Can I put this dog down now? I think he would love that. All right, I think we're done. I think we're done too. <laughs> Thanks, dude. It was no, fun. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it was super fun. It was really fun. Yeah. Are you gonna eat that one? No. Okay. You want it? Yeah. Whoa. Oh. I love him.
Thank you for stopping by Blissing Barbecue. On today's video, I'm going to be cooking up sugar cured baby back ribs. It's off the menu from the legendary Trader Vic's Tiki Bar. So as you can see, I'm not cooking at my house. I'm cooking in this Tiki Lair, just about an hour and a half north of where I live. And I'm being hosted by my buddy, Spike from the Hula Girls channel. Come on in, Spike, it's oh, your house. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. So Spike, we're, we're doing a, a collaboration here. Mm -hmm. He and I are gonna cook these ribs together. And then Spike's going to treat all of us to, I don't even know what cocktail you're making. Trader Vic's punch, Trader Vic's punch? Trader's, we're gonna be making Trader Vic's punch. Wait, where's my book? Thank you so much for having me on your show it, at my house, which is so weird to come like to my bar as a guest behind the bar. It's really weird for me to be here actually because Spike has a channel that my wife and I have fallen in love with. It actually kind of helped us get through the very, being a Californian, you get it, the very intense beginning of the lockdown. You know, we didn't have any place to go and we kind of immersed ourselves in YouTube and we found Spike's channel and we fell in love with it. So oh, thank, thank you, you so for much. that. One of the things that, that drew me to this channel, to Spike's channel, is he's obsessed with the history of these drinks. And you know, he goes over the top finding the correct spirits to use, the mm. correct ingredients. And a lot of these these cocktails were lost in history and they're just now finally you know, being uncovered. Mm -hmm. And I'm the same way when it comes to, you know, these really iconic historic hamburgers. You know, I go above and beyond. I mean, it drives my wife crazy trying to replicate these, uh -huh. these recipes. I'm, I'm digging it, man. This well, is why I'm here. And I thought that that's why we were such a good, good uh, pairing is because I saw you doing the historic hamburgers and stuff. And I was like, oh man, maybe if we could do a Trader Vic's meal. Yes then it would make sense for my channel, it makes sense for it your makes channel, sense. it makes sense for America, or wherever you are, anywhere, really. My half of this collaboration is we're making the sugar cured, on the menu it's spare ribs, but I'm using baby backs because of the cooker I'm using it, they'll, they'll fit easier, but the sugar cured barbecue ribs, um, I'm running off of the book, uh, Trader Vic's Tiki Party, Yeah. and you're using, I mean, uh, I'm using a Barky Loud Dog. So, so the interesting thing to me that stands out right away is that already we're using Demerara syrup. Ah, Demerara. So the interesting thing to me is that right away I noticed that we're using Demerara sugar. And Demerara sugar pops up a lot in tiki cocktails. Yes. So this is a pretty healthy meal, right? Oh, it's very, very healthy. But... <laughs> Feels like Benny Hanna's. You know what that is, right? Ginger. Yeah, you, you use that in some drinks. I, uh, ginger syrup, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Did you, uh, did you like ginger or Marianne better? Actually, Marianne, those little Daisy Dukes. Everybody like Marianne Actually, better. why am I calling Daisy Dukes? It's pre-Daisy Duke. <laughs> They're, I guess they should be calling them Marianne's. But. So let me, let me just teach you the, maybe the most important fact about Trader Vic Bergeron. He is credited with inventing the Mai Tai in 1944. Wow, okay, that's cool. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It smells peanutty. Yes. It completely changes. This would not be the sauce that this is going to be without that. Wow, so if you are allergic to peanuts, can you still? It's sesame seed, it's not peanut. Oh yeah. Yeah. Science. Science. This is pepper from Vietnam. It's a little uh, region in Vietnam, supposedly the world's best pepper. Really? Amazon. Wait, can, can I have some of that pepper? That's way, that is way more than I needed. You said some, you yeah. didn't say a little. Yeah, it's just pepper. I mean, it tastes, <laughs> it's, it's good. good. Honestly, there's nothing crazy special about it, but I read somewhere, <laughs> there you go, it's pepper. I read somewhere it was the best in the world, so I had the bite. Don't do, don't do that.